Lord, welcome to Cricket of Mania. The question we're asking is today whether India can bounce back from two colossal defeats in Australia. Two more matches to go. We don't know which way it could go. Or can, as some people are already saying on social media, to the question we asked, uh, there is no chance whatsoever. I won't say I that. Uh, I won't say that, Govind. I think both the two first two matches were actually run quite close. Mm. However, mm. what is of concern to me is that India seemed to be in a rut. Mm. It's always been a case of so so near yet so far mm. for a long period of time. Mm. And you know, after a while, mm. the the cliche loses its poignancy. Poignancy yeah. comes when you feel that you know hard luck mm. has you know luck has gone against you. Mm. But here, it seems to have become a habit. Mm. So in crunch situations, you're just kind of. Uh, not coming good and you end up losing a match which you could have possibly won. So, uh, we'll come down to the specifics as to why this happened and if there are some lessons or uh, commonalities between both the, on the bowling and the batting side. Chandrish? I, I have no hope for the side now because <laughs> this okay. is the point yeah. on an overseas. So, you're like this gentleman who says no, never and there's someone else who says yes, if you stopped covering them, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think the, we've reached a point on this tour like on previous Australia and yeah. England tours where things start to go horribly wrong for India yeah. and we've reached that point now and uh, in the first two test matches we had our chances like Mr. Mehman said we didn't grab them mm. and now we are in a we are in a familiar situation right now in the, that we have been in the last three four years on an overseas trip this is the point when things start to go horribly wrong for India and I am afraid that uh, the things are not going to improve from here for India. Okay, so let's now dissect the two matches in retrospect. Uh, I asked, let, let's, what in, according to you were the key reasons why uh, India fell off? Because the first one, it was not so bad. I mean, it was... Well, the first was, one we lost by 48 runs yeah. and the next one we lost by 4 wickets. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, I personally feel that it's been the uh, the in in inability of the batsmen to come good. We have a... Good bowling inexper attack. No, yeah. we've got an inexperienced bowling attack, mm. which is not getting enough help in the field. You mm. keep dropping catches and, you know, you drop Steve Smith at a small score and he goes on mm. to make a big 100, then you are up against it. Mm. Now, if, if Australia is making 500, you would, and which has also got an inexperienced, fairly inexperienced batting lineup, then you would expect India to score that much. Between already. Australia's inexperience in batting and India's in bowling, where would, which would you? Well, I, I mean, depth of experience of Australia mm. is, is, is a little more, but they've been more vulnerable than ever before. Mm. They've had the Phil Hughes's, you know, tragedy yeah. to overcome. They've lost Michael Clark, their captain, because of injury. Mm. So, they have been vulnerable, mm. but we've allowed them to get off the hook. Mm. And I think it both times, you know, one bad session mm. with the bat mm. cost us the second match. Mm. One hour, actually. Mm. And, uh, you know, the inability of the batsmen, apart from Virat Kohli, to stand in there in the first test match, make those 48 runs, you could have won the test match. It would so, you're saying with it's more a failure of the batsman than the… I think it's a failure of the batsman. Okay. So, in that case, it would be fair to say that the bowlers have done better. The bowlers have done as well as one would have expected, expected them to do. do. Okay. Uh, Chandesh? I look at it slightly differently. I think that it's the, the last four players. Mm. Both in, in both the test matches, it was the tail which let us down by not capitalizing at crucial moments. And the same thing happened with the bowling, the same bowlers failed with the… I don't expect them to turn up and score 100 every time they bat, but I think there's not been enough effort from the lower order ba batsmen to stay on and ensure that the good work done by the top order is, uh, yeah. is ta taken care of. But more importantly, I would say that it's the failure of someone like Rohit Sharma to kick on and get a big score which has hurt India the most. The yeah, number six spot is the Kandish, most… Rohit Sharma, Mahendra Singh Dhoni goes for a blob, Virat Kohli goes for one. I mean, that's not the tail, that's your, you know, that's the no, scraps of a batting. No, I'm saying that the lower order has not uh, been rallying around someone uh, someone like a Mahindra Singh Dhoni or… Yeah, in as you're saying that even the middle to top has not uh, failed You to, know, I mean, Virat failed Kohli to failed in both innings in the second test match. Yeah. Uh, Shikhar Dhawan, for one reason or the other, looked, we didn't come out to bat on the fourth morning, mm. which is now becoming an issue. Mm. Uh, Cheteshwar Pujara has had some bad luck. No, I'm saying it's been and a… was someone we were looking forward to. Yeah. It's not been a very cohesive batting performance. Mm. Now, you know, if you want your tail to give you 100, 150 runs or even 75 runs, it's not speaking too highly of the top order. Right. Okay. But I think someone like a Rohit Sharma has to stand up now. But it's not the tail. But it's not the tail, but I think he, he needs to be the rallying point mm. around the tail because he's he's in the position what so, VVS Lakshman so is in. in and the, In the sequence of uh, kind of uh, uh, hierarchy of uh, sort of causes for defeat, you would place the failure of the tail order? Uh, I would top? place the failure of the bowling mm. and uh, consequently their performance in the, in the lower order mm. and then Rohit Sharma as the top three reasons. Mm. Because I think that Rohit Sharma comes in at a situation where Virat Kohli, 
Ajinkya Rane, Vinuli Vijay have set the foundation, right. but he's not able to kick on and get the scores required from him. Right, and this is your in your mind unlikely to change for the next two tests, uh, even your earlier. Yeah, I, I, do, I don't see that changing at all. I, I, I see Suresh Shahina coming in place of Rohit Sharma, mm -hmm. but uh, it will be throwing him at the deep end without any cricket in the last one month. Okay, uh, Ayaz, are you equally pessimistic or optimistic as the case may be? Well, you know, uh, you know, my concern is a little more broad based. I think we are lacking the sustenance to last five days. We saw it happen in England. Mm -hmm. We had a terrific test match at Lords, and then after that, we couldn't last three days. Mm -hmm. So we played five days. Mm. In the first test match here, mm. on the fifth day we kind of fizzled out, mm. and the second test match we will lasted barely four days, mm. and it seems to it just seems to say that there is not enough bandwidth for the players to play test cricket. Mm. Our one day record is continues to be very strong. is very very good. Yeah, you know, but you look at the test in South Africa, you were in a position to beat them, you couldn't. You lost the series and came right. back. Right. So, but as we discussed on this show, Ayaz, after uh, England, you know, Ravi Shastri and the whole emphasis on at least. Yeah. Seeming emphasis on test cricket and an attempt to sort of uh, uh, salvage something. No, nothing seems to have borne out of that. Well, we played longer than we did in England. Okay. But we haven't changed the result. Mm. So, in terms of time spent in the middle, yes, I think we've comp we've shown aggression. Sometimes aggression for the heck of it. Mm. Uh, and I think that, you know, uh, apart from the hype and the hoopla about Indian cricket, there has to be some kind of ultimately a result from mm. 2011 every time you've gone overseas mm. you just don't seem to produce a victory mm. now that's not good enough mm. even new zealand they went to west indies and they won mm. they went to uae and competed hard against pakistan almost won right we are just not showing the same resolve okay but you're saying that uh, all other things or factors equal we've actually done better than england we've done better than england so far so I mean, if you just look at the scoreboards yes certainly we, we, we've competed hard yeah. we've come close yeah you agree with that? Uh, yeah, on the last two, we couldn't even score 300. So, yeah. at least in this two, first two test matches. So, on, on the larger sort of, uh, uh, you know, sort of larger arena of test cricket, then we are clearly advancing. Marginally better than the previous tour of Australia. Yeah. Marginally better than what we did in England, mm. stayed longer. Mm. But I think we lack a long term, like you said, long term vision for test cricket. Mm. All our focus seems to be about the Cricket World Cup, which is coming up in February, March. Mm. As Stuart Clark said before the start of the series, a former Australian fast bowler, mm. he said that if India doesn't do well in the test matches, no one will bother if they win the World Cup. Mm. So, all our focus okay. seems to be the World Cup right okay. now. So, let me uh, bring up the other point, you know, that uh, the Indian team seems to have been whining, right? And uh, yeah. an Australian paper called Tony a wine man, right? And, and uh, they are whining about pitches, the facilities, the empiring. Are we bad losers or have we become bad losers? I think we are just spoiled. Okay. You know, we are spoiled by too much adulation, too much money perhaps, mm. too much attention. So, when, when you move out of your own kind of comfort zone, which is mm. playing in India, mm. then everything seems to have, see, you know, seems to be a problem. Mm. You know, next we'll be complaining about the heat, mm. because we're playing in Australia in summer. Mm. Uh, we complained about the cold in England, mm. you know, I mean, you can't grip the ball and you can't do… It. And this is something not, which is not new, Govind. Mm. Complaints have been there since the time I can remember. Mm. So, I and think… And they increase when we… They increase tour. and you know, I haven't seen too many people complaining when they come here about the heat in India or the humidity. Mm. They take it as one of the challenges. Mm. So, practice pitches, they are not good enough. I, you know, this is the first time I've heard of Australian practice pitches <laughs> not being good. Yeah. Somebody not getting vegetarian food, therefore he is yeah. not able to bowl well is something and I can't… Off. <laughs> and walks off. is something that, you know, yeah. boggles my mind. Yeah. So, I think we just need to kind of, you know, put our nose to the, noses to the grind and say, come what may, we want to win. I think mm. that's where champion you know, champion teams and champion players stand up. Mm. They cope with adversity and setbacks and obstacles. That's what sport is all about. Correct. Yeah. You, know, you don't have a controlled environment which says everything will be done to make sure you win. So has the wine quotient gone up this time? I know that we'll, while we may have improved our performance vis-a-vis -vis England. Well, I, yeah, I think so. And also, I think that, uh, as you said, there's no, not much I, I think there's not much pride about doing well overseas. Mm. You look at the generation of Tendulkars and the Dravids and the Lakshmans, they wanted to do well overseas. Mm. I, I tend to feel that this generation believes that all the respect gets earned by playing well at the IPL. So, mm. what's the big deal about doing well overseas? That, that feeling needs to change and only then we'll be able to uh, Get back the mojo as as, as you say uh, abroad, mm. which we had in the early part of 2000s. 
Right. Okay. So here's another comment. Uh, Simple man says, uh, uh, I mean, whether if, whether India could bounce back, and he says it's inversely proportional to the bounce of the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some interesting comments coming yeah. in today. Yeah. Huh? But you know, that's a it's a very cliched approach to how India fare overseas. Is that you know we haven't done well playing on fast bouncy pitches, which is actually not true. Yeah. Uh, in the first two matches, we've done rather well, hmm. barring that one spell from Mitchell Johnson in the second Test match. Hmm. And you know, I, I, th I think j it just came like a tornado. Hmm. And one hour later, it seemed like the pitch was back to its normal state again. So I think it's more to do with the mind than just about the pitch. Hmm. I think by and large, India have coped much better against the fast bowling. I thought that we would be swept aside hmm. by Mitchell Johnson and gang, much as England were. That has not happened. Okay. So there is some hope in that fact that you know you've gone out there and made some runs. Right. Okay. So let's let's address the the last question now. Uh, the last broad question, at least, is uh, two more matches left. What needs to be done? Ought we to do? And is there hope? I mean, okay. I, I know uh, Chandesh has already taken a position that there is no hope. But having said that, no. I mean, look, you can't win the series, hmm. but you can square the series. Yeah. You know, two test matches in Melbourne and Sydney. Hmm. They're not going to be easy because psychologically now you are down. Yeah. Your the Aussies are on top. Yeah. Uh, but they are still vulnerable. They've they've got one of their players injured. Mitch Marsh, another one comes in. Michael Clark, I think, is still going to be missed. Uh, so India need to keep up the aggression that they've done, hmm. but they need to be a little more focused. I mean, the game plan is even in the first test, Karan Sharma was being you know hit all over the park was I think persisted with far too long mm. by Virat Kohli who was captaining in his first test match. Mm. In the second test match they tried to get Mitchell Johnson out on the short pitch delivery and he was hitting you all over the park. Those guys are used to playing mm. on fast and you know mm. bouncy pitches. So mm. I think some tactical uh, improvements need to be made. Mm. But more and more I think that it's all about in the mind you keep aside all these practice pitches and vegetarian food or non-vegetarian <laughs> food mm. and go out and play to win. Mm. You know, okay. and I think we are losing out on crux moments. Uh, you drop a catch at a key key position, you drop a Steve Smith, and then what the hell? Virat Kohli in the slips is not one third the fielder that he is in the in the in the cover. He's a brilliant fielder, but in the slips he's very ordinary. So we don't have a slip fielder. And no, why is that? So no, if we were to fix this for the next two matches, what? So next two matches will be, be difficult to fix a slip fielder yeah. because you haven't created slip specialists. Okay. That's one of the jobs of the coaches and the captain and mm. you know over a period of time mm. you can't decide on the start of the tour mm. that these guys are my great slip fielders. It doesn't mm. happen. Mm. So overall the fielding has been better than earlier but not great. Mm. The batting has been very good but not great. Mm. The bowling has been better than ordinary but not great. And I think what this in my opinion, this Australian team is not great. We should have beaten them. Mm. They are missing a few key yeah, players. Exactly. So, I mean, so Dhoni keeps saying or he said uh, that basically what was lacking was experience. He said the players are young, if they bat more, they play more, they'll get more experience and they'll be used to these 20 minute kind of situations yeah, where you know, everything think, kind of caves Gobin, in. I'm afraid that I've, I, I would have believed that even about a year back, year and a half back, but I, I feel that you can't keep on saying it for four years, five years. Mm. You know, David Warner has as much experience as Virat Kohli, Cheteshwar, Pujara, Rohit Sharma and the like. Mm. So why is he doing better than your players? Mm. You know. So, I mean your best players performed when they were young. Mm. Gavaskar made 774 runs in his first series. Mm. So it's not that it's only about experience or inexperience. It's mm. also about focus, mm. it's about desire, it's mm. about deep ambition that I want to go out there and be the best. Okay. Unfortunately, very telling comment. We may be the richest cricket country and the cricket board in the world, but we are not the best. Correct. And Chandesh, what's your sense for the next two matches? I think the next two matches are going to be like an acid test for someone like a Dhoni as a test keeper. Mm. I think that time for a change in test matches has long gone. Mm. Uh, I think we should have made the change in test matches. If India doesn't do well in test matches, in the next two test matches, I for one think that it's time for Dhoni to go as a test keeper. I think it's time for someone like a Virat Kohli. We need to invest in somebody, have a long term vision. And separate the two. Uh, separate the two. I have think Dhoni might decide that himself. Yeah. yeah. You know, because ultimately he'll look at his own record. It's gone from mm. brilliant to mm. very, very mediocre, mm. at least in mm. test matches. Okay. But I think that this is this is the moment. Mm. If he if we don't grab this moment, mm. then Dhoni as a test keeper, his 
would be history in my view and i think that the so, no when you say okay so that's the challenge on him but what in your mind should he be focusing on the two or three things to make sure or at least try and ensure that it doesn't we don't see a repeat of adelaide and brisbane i think he needs to be like you said he needs to be a little more smarter when i i get a feeling that when the sixth wicket falls he starts thinking like a one day captain thinking that it's the 45th over and he need, needs to save runs mm. and that's where we lose the plot <laughs> most often the most often on overseas trips mm. especially in the last 3 years because he no longer has the zahir khan's of the world to mm. back him up with his plans mm. so i think that he needs to get that back and i think someone like a ravi shastri needs to get into his ear a lot more and uh, mm. get him to talk more about strategies when the tail wa- starts wagging especially uh, like they did in the last test match i think that's where we seem to lose the plot especially with dhoni in charge in test matches i think that's where he needs to improve right okay i asked last word you know i think that uh, they need to kind of make it a mission you know we keep talking this is the election season in <laughs> india we've been talking of mission this and mission that mm. they should make it a mission to square the series mm. uh, i think the way this the trend has suggest the trend suggests that both these remaining test matches will be decided mm. we'll get a result unless it you know the weather plays spoil sport so there will be one team which wins and one team which loses now india have to make sure that they are the team which wins both matches mm. if you can square the series from this stage and come back mm. then i'll say hey mm. that's terrific mm. because it suggests a massive turnaround right so but what's the one thing that could be done differently I, I know what I you've th- talked about is more the infusion of energy and the infusion of uh, winning spirit and so on but is there something else i i think really you need technique uh, Yeah. You know I think you need to try and outbat Australia. Okay. You know, and if they make 300 you have to make sure you make 350. You have to get that little edge ahead of them because you don't have the firepower in the bowling. Hmm. But if they have that kind of believe the bowlers that we've got a little more runs to defend hmm. than Australia had, right. it might just spark off some, you right. know, great performance. Right. And a great performance is something that we look for. We that's all we have time for on cricket of mania. The question we were asking is can India bounce back in Australia? Well, the consensus seems to be it's going to be tough, but we do of course want the Indian team to square off at least uh, and hopefully keep the test cricket flag flying for a little longer. We'll be back next week same time. Thanks for watching.